Learning about rugs doesn't have to be intimidating. I'd like to give you a simple approach that will allow you to transport yourself back to whatever time the rug was made and imagine that you're one of the women who was making it. The reason that I love village and nomadic rugs is because they were made without a cartoon. They had to figure it out as they went along and there was no such thing as perfection, which is what they were striving for in the urban workshops. Here you have the true art, in my opinion. There were four women sitting at this rug, which is seven and a half feet wide. And the woman far right, her responsibility is to start the design. And they know that it's going to be four rows of what they call ghouls which are these rounded motifs that in the old days they used to say were elephants' footprints. But these are just almost like a coat of arms for the respective tribes. And when we get back into the third quarter of the 19th century, they're much more authentic and they are much easier to identify as a particular tribe because they were weaving them for their own purposes to go in their yurts. They weren't selling them yet. So when you're lucky enough to find a piece that's third quarter of the 19th century, you know it was in a yurt, which is pretty amazing in and of itself. So getting back to the start of the rug, she's setting the tone with where she starts the, what they call the secondary goal. And the reason they start with a half goal, and you see this on all kinds of rugs, is that they want you to feel like it's infinity. So they're putting a frame around something, and the way that they do the ends and edges is such that you could imagine the design going on forever. So as we get to the second weaver, she's doing a good job. Everything is nicely proportioned. But then when we get to the actual halfway point of the rug, it's one inch short of where it should be for the center of the rug. The center of the rug is right here at 41 and a half. It may not seem like a big deal, but the woman on the end draws the short straw and look what she does. She's doing her job and she's making the goal in the same size, but then whoops, now what do I do? I've got all this space that they didn't have in the beginning. So she has to improvise and she throws in this little border to take up that space. And then over the course of the weaving of the rug, if we look down on this angle, look how they adjusted little by little each row until they got the proportion back. That's an amazing job of being creative in fixing that. Other things that they have to go through in the beginning of a rug are figuring out the scale and the proportions. So notice that the secondary ghouls in the first complete row have become flattened at the top. And they had to do that because, look, they were running into the, the main ghouls. And so they still needed space between them, and so they flattened it out. Well, they had another shot at getting it right. So then we move up to the third row and ta-da, you've got a beautifully balanced secondary goal and probably the nicest row of goals in terms of proportion. They're beautifully rounded and this is really a sign of excellent, excellent weaving. But even in the context of this, you'll notice that the woman who was weaving this row d just kicks ass with her proportions. But then the woman next to her, it's not quite as good. It's, it's a little bit flattened. And so they're just having to improvise to make this work. And as they're weaving along, they have a sense of how many rows of goals they're going to have in a rug. And so traditionally, this rug is seven by seven and a half. And so it's got 10 rows of gulls, and that's fairly standard for this age. 
But they got to what they thought was the middle of the rug, but they actually had gone beyond the middle of the rug. And so if we pull back, we can see that, all right, wonderful generosity of scale and great negative space. So if we zoom in here, look at the design that's created. It's almost like a different goal on its own in this area. It's, it's the great thing about negative space. And obviously this is a more flattened goal, but if we move over, let's say to here, there's a great example of, of like just if I position the camera like this, it's like you have four quarters and then the little goal in the middle becomes the main event. It's just, they're a mathematical wonder the way they figure this out. So look what they had to do towards the end in order to get their rows of goals to the right number, they became more and more flattened and the negative space becomes less and less because they just had to get that last row of goals. If they had figured out that if they just done one less row of goals, they could have maintained this kind of scale. But this was the way it worked and they didn't have to please anyone but themselves. And the making of the rug was a, a wonderful ritual that was full of, full of joy at that time. And you just get a, a really great result. And the fact that rugs like this are kicking around in rug stores waiting to be bought is a wonder to me because these are the future museum pieces. Once museums finish their obsession with classical carpets, they're gonna be seeking out, okay, what is the, one of the best examples of a third quarter of the 19th century Turkmen rug? So it's an opportunity, but not only an opportunity to acquire something beautiful for your home, but it's an opportunity to embark on an education and if you can gain that way of looking at rugs with your first rug, each successive rug, it's gonna be easier and easier to follow that story and experience what they were experiencing. Happy learning.